Thomas Kenneth Mattingly, better known as TK, has been instrumental in the development of the United States Space Program, and his journey began right here on the plains of Auburn. One thing I would say about Ken Mattingly is that Ken Mattingly has the real right stuff. The real right stuff is, a, is someone who is in an airplane or the cockpit of a spacecraft and who is totally dependable, uh, who is uh, highly thoughtful, very innovative technically, uh, very, very solid um, uh, in, in terms of the skills they bring to bear. Mattingly's role in NASA's Apollo 13 mission was made well known by the film Apollo 13, in which actor Gary Sinise portrayed Mattingly, who was originally designated to be the command module pilot for the mission, but was grounded due to medical precautions for a condition that never developed. Hello there, Deke. What's the story? Jim, we're going to get that power-up procedure to you. We're going to get it as soon as we possibly can. Ken Mattingly's in the simulator right now. Ken's working on it. From Mission Control, TK played an instrumental role in helping the astronauts of Apollo 13 return safely home. We know they have some power left in the LEM batteries, right? Yeah. We have an umbilical that provides power from the command module to the LEM. All right, it's backup for the LEM power supply. I'm listening. So, reverse it. Reverse the flow and see if we can draw these four amps from the LEM batteries before we cut it loose. Why can't we do that? We don't have a procedure for that, do we? You're going to lose a lot in the transfer, Ken. Yeah, yeah, but all we're talking about here is four amps. He told me that he said, you know, there were thousands of people rolled into that character. And I know that there were thousands of people that worked to bring that crew home, but I know that TK played an integral role in making that happen. Mattingly's involvement with the Apollo program began long before Apollo 13. His roles included aiding in the development of the Apollo spacesuits, planning of the Apollo 8 flight to the moon, and helping to organize Apollo 11, which led to the program's first lunar landing. Mattingly would later go on to successfully pilot the command module for Apollo 16. He's only one of 12 men to have gone to the moon and orbited that moon. Um, and that's undoubtedly one of the highlights of his career. Mattingly attended Auburn University on a Navy ROTC scholarship and earned a degree in aeronautical engineering in 1958. Two years later, in 1960, Mattingly earned his wings and would go on to amass 5,000 hours of jet aircraft experience, flying the A1H aircraft and the A3B aircraft from aircraft carriers. From there, he set his sights on the stars. In 1966, Mattingly was honored as a distinguished graduate from the U.S. Air Force Aerospace Research Pilot School and selected as one of NASA's Original 19, a select group of pilots who would go on to either fly to the moon or fly shuttle missions. Mattingly accomplished both. One thing about Ken is you don't want to just call him a, a spaceman or an astronaut. I mean, he is a very solid engineer. He's a naval aviator. He became a rear admiral in the United States Navy, after all. And he became a very accomplished and respected aerospace executive. So you put all of that together, and the man's just had an unbelievably extraordinary life and, and life's work. Mattingly's career with NASA continued well beyond the Apollo program, as he served as head of astronaut support in the Shuttle Transportation System program. He led the Astronaut Office Ascent Entry Group, and he was technical assistant for flight tests of the Orbital Flight Test Program. After serving as backup commander for STS-2 and STS-3, Mattingly was appointed commander for the Space Shuttle Columbia's fourth and final test. This was the famous Auburn flight because it was a flight that Ken commanded, but his pilot for that flight was Hank Hartsfield was also an Auburn graduate. And one other thing about Apollo 16, which tells you about Ken and his fondness for Auburn University, um, Ken apparently brought an Auburn flag with him on that mission. The astronauts were not allowed to, make, to, to take many personal items with them. And I think that says a lot about how, what Ken, how fondly Ken kept Auburn University in his heart. Since Mattingly's retirement, He's returned to Auburn on a number of occasions to speak with students of the College of Engineering. I think that he really has had an impact on students and he has a love for students. And um, the engineering students really ask a lot of questions of him and, and he 
loves to take the time to teach them and to impart his knowledge upon them. And I think that that's one lasting contribution that he's made to Auburn. Ken, I believe, comparable to Neil Armstrong, would pro probably say that first and foremost, of all the things he is, he's, in, in a professional sense, that he's an engineer. And he became an engineer at Auburn University. In terms of what Ken means to Auburn, I mean, certainly we have unbelievable respect and admiration for his life and his career. He really has uh, a name recognition that would, uh, and has more or less done the heroic exploits that really appeal uh, to the American public. And, you know, for a dean of a college of engineering to have a grad like that, it can't get much more gratifying. Following his retirement from the Navy as a Rear Admiral in 1989, Manningly continued his involvement with aerospace engineering within the commercial business environment. Mattingly took on such projects as developing commercial uses for General Dynamics' Atlas launch vehicle. He headed up the X-33 development program for Lockheed Martin, as well as becoming director of Grumman Space Station Support Group. And he has served as president of the Rocket Development Company, which is dedicated to developing low-cost commercial launch systems. He had real high management positions with real technical problems and issues to solve. Um, he would not have taken jobs if they just wanted him to be the token astronaut on the board. I think his greatest accomplishments have been the continued uh, promotion of the importance of America's efforts in space. The technology that has come from uh, that effort that has uh, you know, basically enhanced and changed uh, a life in probably every household in America. Mattingly has been decorated with numerous awards throughout his stellar career, including the Johnson Space Center Group Achievement Award and the American Astronautical Society Flight Achievement Award. NASA has also awarded Mattingly with the Ambassador of Exploration Award, a lunar sample collected during the Apollo space explorations, which Mattingly so passionately dedicated his life to seeing through. Uh, he selected the College of Engineering at Auburn University to display his award. It tells you something about TK's loyalty to Auburn University. It holds a special place in his heart. And I think to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award, which is the, um, the highest award you can receive at Auburn, means the world to them. This is a different one. This is a family award. This is a recognition from your family that you have accomplished great things. For a man with such a distinguished career of excellence, amongst his defining characteristics, TK is an extremely modest and very reserved individual. It is this down-to-earth quality that others find so remarkable when they recall conversations with him. I've never met Thomas. Thomas is, his, is TK's son, but I can tell you how proud TK is of Thomas. Um, when we talk about Thomas, his, he just beams. He does love uh, orange sports cars. One of the things I remember him telling me was that he had told Thomas when he, when he finished his degree, when he um, became a doctor, that he owed TK a, a sports car. So I don't know if he ever got the sports car, but, um, but I do know that TK is so proud of his son. I don't think anybody ever questioned the dependability of, of Ken Mattingly. He's a very disciplined man, very, very strong work ethic, very driven. Some people, you know, that, that they're driven by a passion for something. And I think that he's driven by a passion for a successful space program. For a man who has reached into the heavens, his feet have always been planted firmly on the ground. From the humble plains of Auburn to lunar orbit, T.K. Mattingly has been an outstanding achiever. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so incredibly honored that he is an Auburn University graduate, and we, we believe in our hearts that his, his story is something that will stay with us forever and will be a motivation and, and uh, and a factor of, of stimulating young people 
to dream big, to never give up, failure is not an option. Uh, those are all uh, elements of who Ken Mattingly is. So it's my pleasure uh, to introduce to you uh, an Auburn man, an Auburn engineer, an American astronaut, an American hero, Ken Mattingly.